Once upon a time, a very long time forgotten by most, the heavens opened to bestow abundance onto the planet. Blessings were to pour down upon the world from the celestial storage chambers, bringing wealth to the toil and labor of humans. A man by the name of Enoch lived among this divine scheme. Enoch was unique, selected by the gods for a higher good, and he was not just any man. His life was entwined with the enigmatic watchers, angelic creatures that had formerly dwelt in the upper sky. These watchers had defiled themselves by leaving their heavenly residence and becoming attracted to the world's women and earthly pleasures. Enoch had disappeared from human sight before to these occurrences. Nobody was aware of his whereabouts or his current state. He lived among the holy ones, hidden away, and his life was devoted to holy tasks. With a clean heart, Enoch devoted his days to glorifying the everlasting King of Ages, the Lord of Majesty. The Watchers summoned Enoch one day when he was deep in prayer. Enoch, they proclaimed, You are the scribe of righteousness. Please convey a message for us. The Watchers were in disarray because of the immense damage they had caused to the planet. They had married from among the female humans and produced children together, behaving just like the mortals they were meant to lead and guard. To Enoch, the Watchers admitted their transgressions. They bemoaned the immense harm we had brought onto the planet. We won't be able to find peace or have our sins pardoned at this point. The Watchers were grieving greatly, even though they were celestial beings. Despite their deep love for them, they were aware that they would see their kids die. They would be forever saddened by the loss of their darling children. Though they would beg for forgiveness and tranquility, it was inevitable that they would never experience these gifts. Sorrowfully, Enoch consented to convey the awful news. He was aware of the gravity of his responsibility and the significance of serving as a go-between for the heavenly and the earthly. He was the truth-teller, even if it was harsh, since he was the writer of righteousness. He reached the heights where the Watchers had previously lived. He was there in front of them, reminding them of their transgressions while yet providing solace. The divine verdict was communicated through Enoch. You have greatly destroyed the earth, and neither peace nor sin forgiveness will be granted to you. You will see the murder of your loved ones to the extent that you take pleasure in them. You will mourn for the death of your children and pray for eternity, but you will never find forgiveness or tranquility. With a mask of regret and sadness covering their faces, the Watchers listened. They were aware that their deeds had destroyed their innocent children in addition to ruining themselves. Their decisions had a great impact on them and would weigh them down for all of eternity. Despite his sympathy, Enoch did not waver. He was aware that justice needed to be done. The universe's equilibrium rested on the observance of heavenly law, and angels were not above the law. Though Enoch felt terrible for the children who would suffer, he also realized that their pain was a direct result of what their parents had done. Enoch resumed his role as the scribe of justice after his return to Earth. His entire life was devoted to maintaining the precarious equilibrium between heaven and Earth. To ensure that the lessons learnt by the Watcher's fall would not be lost, he documented the events of his time. Enoch intended to instruct future generations via his writings, emphasizing the value of abiding by divine rule and the repercussions of deviating from the straight and narrow. At some point, the Earth received the blessings from the celestial storage chambers, fulfilling the promise of peace and prosperity for those who stayed faithful to their divine mission. As the pillars of human life, truth and peace shaped a world characterized by justice and harmony. Enoch, a man selected by the heavens, set out on a very important mission during these ancient times. He was to serve as a mediator between the heavenly and the earthly realm, bringing messages of judgment and hope. Throughout his trip, Enoch encountered several situations that tried his resolve and showed him the way of righteousness. One day, Enoch found himself facing the formidable creature Azazel, who had deviated greatly from the divine route. Azazel, you will never have peace. Enoch said in a stern voice, you have been sentenced to hard labor and placed under bond. Because of the injustice you have preached, the godlessness and depravity you have demonstrated to people, you will not be granted tolerance or the ability to ask for anything. Even if Azazel's demise seemed certain, Enoch's task was far from finished. 
Then he spoke to the Watchers as a group. Their hearts pounded with Enoch's words, and they were overcome with fear and anxiety. They begged Enoch to draft a petition on their behalf out of desperation and regret, hoping that pardon would be granted. They pleaded with him to bring their case before the Lord of Heaven since they were too ashamed of their transgressions to even look up at the sky, much less speak. Touched by their situation, Enoch concurred. He painstakingly penned every supplication, describing their emotions, actions, and cries for pity and pardon. Then Enoch traveled south and west of Hermon to the streams of Dan in the region of Dan. He read aloud their petition there beside the placid waters till he fell asleep. Visions visited Enoch while he slept. Chastisement dreams appeared to him, and a strong voice told him to tell the sons of heaven about these dreams and to chastise them. When Enoch awoke, he realized what needed to be done. His face was plastered with shame and grief as he discovered the watchers assembled in Abel's jail, halfway between Lebanon and Sinezer. They were a sight of deep regret as they sobbed. Every word that Enoch spoke from the visions he had witnessed carried the weight of just judgment from God. As Enoch spoke, the watchers listened carefully, their hearts laden with guilt over their sins. Now that they realized how serious their transgressions had been, the watchers realized that their request for pardon would not undo the effects of what they had caused. They had upset the holy order and wreaked havoc on the planet. The reminder of the need to restore equilibrium came from Enoch's rebuke. Enoch, the righteous scribe, was picked to convey a potent message back in those ancient times. The Lord had given him the knowledge and insight to punish the everlasting watchers, the angels who had abandoned their high responsibilities. In his vision, Enoch was to tell them of their doom, which was predetermined by their wicked actions. Enoch started writing their petition, but he saw in his vision that it would never be answered. The Watchers were found guilty in a final verdict. Enoch said, Your request will not be fulfilled for all the days of eternity. You've been handed judgment. You will be confined on earth for the entirety of human history, and you will not ascend into heaven. The Watchers, who had once been amid the stars, were doomed to see their cherished offspring destroyed. They wouldn't enjoy them since their children will be killed by the sword. Their cries for mercy will go unanswered despite their petitions. After then, Enoch described his vision. Clouds and mist engulfed him, as lightning and stars accelerated his rise into the sky. He was carried to a region of dread and wonder by the winds that hoisted him aloft. He was terrified as he got closer to a wall made of crystals that had tongues of fire all around it. Mustering up his bravery, Enoch passed through the fiery tongues and into a lovely crystal home. The ceiling, floor, and walls were all made of crystal and resembled the paths taken by lightning and stars. The mansion was encircled by fiery cherubim, and the air was as clear as crystal. The walls were surrounded by flames, and the gateways were ablaze. The house had no comforts and was as frigid as ice and as hot as fire inside. Enoch trembled and fell on his face as fear took hold of him. Another vision materialized as he lay unconscious. Beyond the first mansion, he spotted another much more gorgeous. It was made completely of fire, and its open portal lured him inside. Above the sea of flames that was the floor, lightning danced with the stars. There was also a burning fire in the ceiling. In the middle of this blazing void was a tall, crystal-like throne with wheels that glowed like the sun. Enoch was unable to gaze at the throne directly as fiery streams emerged from beneath it. The great glory was seated on the throne, his garments whiter than any snow and brilliant than the sun. No angel could enter or look at his face because of the majesty and beauty of his presence. He was surrounded by the blazing fire, and there was a massive fire in front of him that kept everyone away. He had countless numbers of people in front of him, but he didn't require a counselor. The Most Holy Ones never left his presence, but stayed near him. Enoch was still shaking and on his knees when the Lord himself called him. The Lord said, Come hither, Enoch, and hear my word. Enoch was awakened and assisted in rising when one of the Holy Ones approached him. With a reverent expression, Enoch walked up to the door and bent his head. Enoch received words of wisdom and righteousness from the Lord. Enoch paid close attention, 
realizing the seriousness of his task. He was to remind the Watchers of their eternal damnation and the divine justice that had been carried out by bringing them the news of judgment. Thank you for watching.